Good morning, everybody. As some of you may know, I haven't actually made a mainline channel video in a little while. And the main reason for this is I caught the coronavirus, which pretty much impeded my ability to speak entirely. Anytime I wanted to say anything, I would be riddled with coughs. And honestly, it was a terrible experience. So my advice to you is do not get the coronavirus. It was terrible. It's been 23 days and I'm still feeling it. So yeah. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about Dungeons and Dragons Online, specifically the Sacred Fist. Dungeons and Dragons Online recently released archetypes, which if you want to know more about them, I did a review of the patch notes earlier, but suffice to say, they are special sort of subclasses that change up how a character plays. The first three are free, releasing with the Sacred Fist Paladin, the Stormsinger Bard, and the Dark Apostate Cleric. It is important to note that the subclasses change up more than just an enhancement tree, they change up how the base character even functions. As an example, the Sacred Fist Paladin doesn't get martial weapon proficiencies or armor proficiencies. It's a monk-like character. Instead, it gains hand wraps and the ability to use the martial arts combat style. On top of that, it gains a bunch of monk abilities that are changed for your charisma. For example, you get key scaling off of charisma instead of wisdom, and you get evasion from monk, which is very fun. On top of that, you still get the bonus of saving throws from being a paladin, which means you are one of the most saving throwiest sort of fellas out there, dodging and bobbing, weaving between everything else. On top of that, they also get to add their charisma to their armor class, unlike monks who had their wisdom, which is very cool. Now of the three, I thought that Stormsinger would probably be the best, and then Dark Apostate would be pretty good, and then Sacred Fist would be really neat, but maybe not the best one. The main reason why I thought this is because while Sacred Fist is extremely cool, it has a bunch of like cool utility abilities and isn't necessarily going to pump out the most damage. However, when I asked my chat which one I should play first, they said, oh, Strim, you got to play Sacred Fist, Sacred Fist, go, 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 go. And so I started playing it on Hardcore League, a first life Sacred Fist. Uh, I made it yesterday and I leveled it from 1 to 20 really, really fast because Sacred Fist is really, really good for leveling. How does it perform in endgame? I have no idea and I can only extrapolate. However, during the leveling process, it was like cruise control. Sacred Fists actually get charisma to hit and damage while using key weapons at level six. So I decided to play as a drow. I dumped constitution, which is not the best idea for hardcore, but paladins get a lot of health. So I didn't think it would be that too big of an issue. And I went with dexterity, charisma, and wisdom. So I would be able to use all of my abilities, take two weapon fighting and still use charisma to hit and damage. The problem is with the early game, uh, you need strength to actually hit and damage with hand wraps. So I just used bull strength potions for the first five levels. And then once I got to level six, it got a lot smoother when I just had my charisma hit and damage all set up. Now, the reason why this character works so well is because you get whirlwind attacks as your cleaves out of the sacred fist tree. Whereas a regular paladin just gets cleave attacks, the whirlwinds mean you get a lot of extra hits whenever you decide to use them, making them quite potent. I originally thought key generation might have been a bit of an issue with this character, but it turns out that's really not a problem because hand wraps generate key fairly well. And the only thing you have to really spend it on in the early game is the cleave. Now, as you get higher level, you do get more things you want to spend your points on. But to start out, the cleave is the only thing and it only costs 12 key. So every 12 attacks, you get an AOE attack. But remember, you get extra key when you double strike, you get extra key when you offhand attack. So again, it's not too bad overall. Getting the extra cleave attack meant that this character actually had a sizable amount of area of effect in the early game. However, it was still a little slow, mostly because I spent points not in the Sacred Fist tree where I was getting more damage, but in the Radiant Servant tree. That's right, this character also gets access to Radiant Servant instead of Vanguard. They don't get shields, so it wouldn't make sense for them to be a shield user, so instead they get Radiant Servant, except all the stuff that says Cleric now says Paladin on it. And this was super cool. Getting access to Cure Moderate Wounds as a spell-like ability early game meant I could just basically cure myself and anyone else in my party the entire time during the leveling process. And Cure Moderate Wounds might not sound like it's that impactful, but you get so much extra spell power just from both the Sacred Fist Tree, which gives positive spell power, and Radiant Servant that I was always able to keep people topped up and get myself out of a pinch. Plus, if you really need a big burst, you're a Paladin. You could just use Lay on Hands. Additionally, Paladins of the Sacred Fist variety once they're level six, are counted as wearing heavy armor while they're centered for the purposes of Sacred Defender. So what this means is you can take all the juicy stuff out of Sacred Defender that gives you bonus hit points while you're wearing heavy armor. And guess what? I'm not wearing heavy armor, but the game thinks I am and I get those bonus hit points. So the character was super tanky and very, very defensive. Really high saving throws with evasion meant I didn't really have any close calls during the leveling process. But again, the damage did feel a little bit slower and I was thinking it was going to be a slog through the entire game. But oh ho ho, I was so wrong. Once I hit level 11, 
I got access to the new and revamped Incinerating Wave. Incinerating Wave is a spell from Henshin Mystic that shoots this purple flame wave, and you've probably never seen anybody use it, but it's very, very cool. Well, it got a buff in this patch for both the Henshin Mystic version and the Paladin version to now deal a d6 fire and force damage, a d6 plus three, sorry, per level. So what that means is this is 2d6 plus 6 damage per level when you cast it. Now, the damage might seem really insane, but it actually scales off of melee power. So you can't scale it with spell power during the heroic leveling process, and you basically don't have any melee power during the heroic leveling process either. But you gotta understand, every time you press this ability, it does so much damage. Is it overpowered? No. But in an area of effect, you can now chunk off half of a monster's hit points during the leveling process, then follow it with a cleave and move on to the next pack. Boy, did it feel good. Almost immediately after this, we farmed an Element of Chaos, a quest that drops a ring called Ichthanor's Signet Ring, which has an effect called Alchemical Conservation, giving you two key per strike, which meant I could just spam out all my key abilities whenever I wanted, and this character started to fly. The second I got this ring, so I was getting double the amount of key, I could put on the Sacred Fist Empowerment spell, that's the second level spell that gives you extra Sacred Fist dice, and I was doing way more damage, and then on top of that, I'm just blasting out this key wave all the time. From level 14 all the way up to 20, this character flew, and I felt like I was the strongest person in the party, oftentimes leading the kill counts, even though there were other people with actual stronger builds in my party. Sacred Fist definitely impressed me and was way more fun to play than I was expecting, and I think this would be a fantastic character for you to pick up, even if you're playing free-to-play, you've ne never played DDO before, this is a very, very cool to character to get started with. Self-sufficient, tanky, you get to punch people in the jaw. It really just does everything. And so I super enjoyed it. I'm going to do a quick overview here of what's actually in the build so you can make it yourself. But I'll have a link in the description if you want to try playing your own Sacred Fist today. Again, this was played on Hardcore. So I went from 1 to 20 on Hardcore in two days. Um, yeah, this was a really, really strong character. Uh, I basically didn't slow down. It was awesome. You could run through traps because your saves are so high. Um, it was great. I didn't have any special gear. Everything I used, I found. We did Temple of Elemental Evil during the leveling process. Like, I, I, it just did a good job. Would recommend Sacred Fist way more fun than I expected, and I look forward to playing it. Anyway, I'm going to pass it over to me with the build. So here it is, the Sacred Fist on Hardcore League, level 20, my Paladin Sacred Fist. I am, in fact, a Drow Elf, um, specifically because I felt like it fit better for the actual stats that I needed. And I got to say... Two days of questing, we ran through so many different quests, not all of them of course, but you know, we did what we could, um, and you know, ran a track up 1599 favor, which is not too bad overall for a pretty quick sprint on a first life character, so close to that 1750, but it was okay. Um, stats, nothing really to write home about, but as I said, they're all right, I got a couple cool things going here. The weirdest thing is they started with the 10 constitution, as I mentioned before, this character Obviously, you want to have more constitution for Hardcore League, but uh, on a, the software servers, you probably won't notice it as much. And uh, uh, I didn't really notice it that much here, even on Hardcore League, because Paladins get so many extra hit points. Instead, I started with a 16 Dexterity, which I bumped up to a 17 at level 4. I started with a 12 Intelligence, because the only three skills that I took were Concentration, Heal, and Use Magic Device. You need Concentration for your key and maintaining it. You need Heal. Well, you don't need Heal, but I liked it for the early games, just get a little extra um, healing spell power, which was nice. Um, and use magic device because I couldn't guarantee I had an item um, and use magic device because you got to be able to use magic device. It's for your shield wands. I can use greater heroism scrolls now. So very, very valuable ability. I don't put the half point like I did, though, at level 20. That was a mistake. Um, yeah. And then wisdom 12, just so I can cast spells right away. If you're on the regular servers uh, or if you have tomes, if you have whatever, you can start with like an eight wisdom if you want. I just didn't have that as an option. So I started with the 12. Now, Charisma, I started with an 18, and I bumped it up every chance I could after level 4, so uh, it's now 22, which is not too bad. And as you can see, Charisma feeds in both to your armor class, so it's got Charisma bonus to armor, and then on top of that, you've also got Charisma bonus onto all of your saving throws. So saving throws are not too bad for a level 20 character, um, and Magic Resistance rating capped, Physical Resistance rating will be going up. It goes up to 94 when I cast um, Angel Skin, so my character is a little bit more powerful there. As far as the feats go... I took all of the two weapon fighting feats because you need them for the combat style because two weapon fighting with hand wraps. But also there's the updated martial feat, which is Swords to Plowshares. Swords to Plowshares now gives a plus one uh, critical threat range bonus to hand wraps. So it's quite good here. So that is exactly why I used it. Um, outside of that, I didn't, I took, uh, where is it? Quicken at 18. Whoops. I took Quicken at level 18 uh, just because I needed to make sure I had uh, Quicken here. Because um, it's good for like a lot of your different spells and abilities. And then I took Precision as well in the early game. As well as Improved Critical Bludgeoning. 
and uh, Swords of Plowshares, so I can just get some extra damage. As far as the new spells go, Keybolt, I pretty much never use this. Uh, you probably will not either. It doesn't have a saving throw. It says it does, but it doesn't. So you aren't probably not ever going to use this. But Sacred Flame Empowerment, I didn't use this at first. I used um, Righteous Command and Angel Skin. Angel Skin first starting at level 8 when I got it, and then Righteous Command at 10 because I need to make sure I didn't die. And uh, PRR is good. Righteous Command also very good. Uh, but the Sacred Flame Empowerment, once I picked this up a little bit later, I think I picked this up at 13, I think. Uh, this adds a million damage to your spells. This is basically a buff that when you press it, your character has an animation, casts a spell, and for 18 seconds, you do extra damage. This is probably not the best end game ability, but during the leveling process, man, did it up my damage by a lot. It basically doubles the amount of Sacred Flame damage that you're adding, which is kind of cool. Uh, Incinerating Wave did way more damage than I expected. Uh, so great spell, great ability. It takes some practice to get used to targeting. I find that the best way to target with it is to select yourself. So hit F1, so you select yourself and then just aim your camera. So for example, if I want the incinerating wave to go directly there, um, I just aim the camera and then I press the button as opposed to just like kind of firing and forget. I find it oftentimes will run into the ground. Um, so you need to do a little bit of manual aiming, but it's not too bad other than that. And then lastly, a spell I didn't use in heroics at all, key explosion. It's a little expensive until you get a bonus key item. So uh, even with my one bonus key item, it was still a little bit too much. I'm hoping that in epics, this will be easier to maintain and sustain because all my other spells kind of eat up my key quite a bit. As far as the enhancement tree goes, uh, this is kind of how I built it out. I am using Vistani. If you're free to play, you don't have to use Vistani. Just take the uh, action boost double strike here and then probably just jam like more charisma and all these trees. Um, but yeah, Sacred Fist. I grabbed the cleaves because, as I said, the cleaves are whirlwinds, so they are 360 degrees, or they're supposed to be. They're currently only frontal, but they're probably going to change that soon in a patch. Exalted Smite is a frontal cleave that does a bunch of damage, so that's also very, very good. Um, and then I grabbed the extra damage dice on Sacred Fist. I grabbed the offhand strike chance, the movement speed, because movement speed is good. All the damage up here, the extra cleave, and violence begets violence. I didn't take a few things. Uh, helplessness damage, don't care, doesn't matter. Uh, key Shout. I could probably take this one intimidate stuff, but I don't really care. Um, this is just skills. Uh, critical mastery, probably good, but I didn't. I feel the other stuff is more valuable to me. Uh, action boost double strike. I took action boost haste because I feel like I'm gonna get a high double strike later, and uh, action boost haste feels really good. Important note: action boost double strike early game is really nice because when you double strike, you get extra key, so this helps you really like work your way through that key. So it's not bad to start with double strike and then maybe swap out later or something uh, in the future. Um, I didn't take Deflect Arrows because I get it out of Vistani, but if you don't have Vistani, you can get it here. And then these two abilities. So Evasive Dance uh, doesn't give you Improved Evasion. It makes, for three points, it counts like you have Improved Evasion, which is way worse than having Improved Evasion. The reason why is in Epics, you get Shadow Dancer, which if you have Improved Evasion, it makes this you don't fail Reflex Saves on a one. Um, but this doesn't give you Improved Evasion. This just has an effect that's like Improved Evasion, so it doesn't work for this. So as a result, um, I didn't take that effect. And instead, I'm just going to be using Shadow Dancer for Improved Evasion instead. Um, but to each their own. And then this is Divine Strike. So it's on Vorpal, you stun demons or devils for no save. Um, this is very similar to the Paladin effect that does something um, very close. However, the Paladin effect works on evil outsiders, uh, which is more broad. So it's demons and devils and reapers. And also is five seconds, whereas this is only demons or devils. Uh, for two points, this is too expensive and I wouldn't take this. Um... I thought this was Evil Outsiders, admittedly, when I first read it, but yeah, turns out it's not. So, yeah. But Sacred Fist is, has other good stuff, so just take the other stuff instead. I already spent 44 points in this damn tree. Uh, Sacred Defender, I took all this good stuff here. As I said, uh, Tenacious Defense, it says you need to be wearing heavy armor, and I'm clearly not wearing heavy armor on my character. However, I did want uh, to point out that you do get the uh, Religion feat. This wasn't in the patch notes, so it might be a little bit confusing and I forgot to cover this, but you get Follower of Path of Light, which gives you hand wrap proficiency and their favorite weapon. And then at six, you get Divine Dream. So while centered, you are considered to be wearing heavy armor for the purpose of Sacred Defender. It doesn't count for anything else. So for example, you don't get the physical resistance rating of a heavy armor plate. It's just for Sacred Defender. And also you get Charisma to attack and damage with key weapons, which works with any key weapon, which means um, if you take, for example, Whirling Steel Strike on this character, which you can do, you can take Whirl Whirling Steel Strike and a Sacred Fist, you can get Longsword as a key weapon, and you get Charisma to hit and damage with your Longswords if you wanted to do that instead. It won't be a favorite weapon. You have to figure that out um, because Sacred Fist can't choose anything else. They have to be this deity. Um, so, you know, you, you'll get there. Uh, Radiant Servant, I only actually put these six points in. I thought I was going to spend more, 
Um, but I was going fast, so I wanted damage. If you want a more supporting role, you can actually take the improved turning and get the instant kill turning on Paladin, which is kind of cool. You can also go ahead and grab positive energy burst. I have a lot of charisma, so I have a lot of turns. So this is useful for this as well. And if you want, you can just keep going up and grab even more turning abilities, um, such as like new reactive heals pretty nice. The radiance effect is really good. Um, divine energy resistance is good for leveling. And even still, positive energy aura. Uh, something you can do, because the tier five of Sacred Fist is good, but it's not like the best. If you wanted, you could just take some of the damage out of here and then just go tier five Radiant Servant, pick up the positive energy aura and be an energy aura in combat melee healing paladin. It's kind of cool. And then Vicente Night Fighter. This one's kind of self-explanatory. It's just a bunch of damage. Uh, if you don't know, Vicente Night Fighter gives a bunch of universal stuff. So this grants like double strike all the time, deflect arrows, physical and magical resistance rating, which is nice. Haste boost. So I don't need to be a dagger user to take this. Very, very good. And then draw. Um, and then as far as epic destinies go, I don't know what I'm doing. We'll figure it out later. I just got to 20, so I'm not entirely sure. And then items, I just put on everything I could find. Um, we ran Temple of Unmet Evil, so I got these cool goggles. These are incredibly good. So double strike quality, double strike, not too bad. Also managed to pull Flight Foot Griefs when doing Ravenloft. And this is the big one. This is, I think, the only item I'm going to point out with is Ixthenor's Signet Ring. It's got Alchemical Conservation, which gives you plus one key when you hit and one extra action boost and one turn undead. Wouldn't you know, I use all those things. So very, very handy. Plus it grants uh, UMD which is nice because I need to uh, use stuff. And then Divine Augmentation actually works on your Paladin spells, which means that um, instead of gaining 20 uh, physical resistance rating from Angel Skin like I'm supposed to, when I click this button, I actually get 21 because it's casting at cash level 21 thanks to this ring because apparently Angel Skin has no maximum cash level. It says it does, but uh, yeah, it does not. So very cool. Anyway, that's Sacred Fist. Super fun, way more fun than I was expecting. Um, like seriously, I thought it was going to be kind of a drag and be a little bit slower. Not like a drag, but like be a slow leveling character. And this thing just screamed through. First life, no tomes, just sprinted through. No items to start with. I had nothing for the first majority of the opening. Uh, and in two days, level 20 on hardcore. So not too bad. Uh, if you want to play a Sacred Fist, I'm going to have a link below to a build guide you can follow if you want. Oh, I'm really out of breath. Sorry, I've been streaming for like 11 hours and I'm still getting over coronavirus. So um, if you like what you saw, follow the channel. I'm going to have more build guides and other things for you. And hopefully things will be um, getting faster and easier for me to produce here on out. Um, but thank you for watching. Appreciate everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening and don't get coronavirus. It sucks. And play a sacred fist. It's really fun. <laughs>